Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Derek Kelly from Dirk.com and in today's video, which is sponsored by my good friends at Squarespace, I wanted to share with you a simple rundown of how we go about creating basic materials in Blender as well as some simple tips for getting started. So I've got a scene here with three models in it, but you can't see that because there are no lights in the scene. So step one to creating materials in Blender is to get some lights into your scene. Now, normally when you're adding lights, you use these options here in the shift a menu, but since this is a materials tutorial, we'll light the scene using emissive planes. Be sure you're in the cycles render engine for emissive lighting to work properly. I'll press shift a to add in the plane and then move it up just so it's a little bit above the models. Now to add a material to this plane, I'll go into my shading tab here and press this button new. Now the default material is a principled shader, which we will be working with quite a bit in a moment, but for now I want to click here instead and have this be an emission shader. I can control now the color and strength of it with these options here. I'm going to duplicate this light object, which will give us a little bit of a backdrop, but also add some additional light to the side and back of our object. Now, right now these objects have the same material as the one they were duplicated from, which let's go ahead and name that material bright, but I would like these to be a little bit less bright than the one on top. So I can add a new material by pressing this button here, which will create a duplicate with the same settings as the previous material. Now I can control the strength here, but the original material will stay the same. So let's go ahead and rename this new material to less bright and apply it to the other plane by selecting that material in the drop down here. Now that we can see our models, let's get into making some of those fun materials. All right, you material masters, let's see your website. Oh, you don't have one? Are you living under an untextured rock? Whether you're just starting out, you're a successful freelancer, or you've just been born, you should have a website. Build one today with Squarespace. Squarespace is by far the most efficient way to take that nasty folder of renders on your computer and start looking like a professional. Pick one of their masterfully designed templates and start building. There's really not much to build though because everything is basically ready to go right off the bat. Complete your site with a contact form and maybe someone will reach out to you with that little side project so you can finally take your partner out on that date they've been asking for. Get started today by going to squarespace.com slash Dirk for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Let's select this object in the middle and press this button to add a new material to it. Now the first and most obvious option we can control here is the color. If you click here, you'll see that we can change the color of our object with either RGB values, hue saturation value, which is my favorite, or by inputting a specific hex value here. The other two models are here just to represent some different surface qualities, and I want those to also have the same material. So let's add our material to those. You could do that by selecting them and then taking the same material from the drop down like we did before, or you can select them both and then select the object with the material we want to copy last, and then press Control L and link materials. Now all three will have the same material. Now in order to see things a bit easier, rather than adjusting my materials in the sidebar here, I'm gonna open up a new window here on the left side and change this to a shader editor. Anytime you're making complex materials, this is where you'd wanna be making those changes. We'll keep things pretty simple in this video, but getting used to working in a shader editor will be useful for you as you become more familiar with Blender. So we already played with the color value, and I would say the next most important value to familiarize yourself with is roughness. If we drag this slider up and down, you'll see what happens. A lower value means a lower roughness, AKA shiny, and a higher value is more rough or less shiny. Moving on from roughness, let's take a look quickly at the metallic slider. Now, usually you'd want this to be either at one or zero and not in between. For metals, obviously it should be set to one and for all other materials, it should be set to zero. Now I do a fair amount of stylized work though, and sometimes I can get really cool effects by playing with some non-realistic values in the middle here. The next super cool slider we have control over is transmission. Now I will say briefly, if your metallic value is set to one, transmission will not work. So let's go ahead and make sure that's pulled all the way back down to zero. And transmission is how much light is allowed to transmit through your object. For most glasses and clear plastics, you'd want this to be all the way to one, but there are some times when you'd want things to be not fully transparent and you might play with a value a little bit less than one. Now, when working with transmissive materials, you usually want your color values to be all the way up to one for maximum clarity. 
And then the other color thing to note here is saturation. It really goes a long way when working with transmissive materials. So consider dropping that down a little bit if you're creating something like a tinted glass. Now, roughness also plays a big role in the appearance of transmissive materials. A low value will look more like a polished, blown glass, and a higher roughness will look more like a cloudy plastic. Most looks can be achieved with this alone, but we do also have control over the transmission roughness, which can affect how clearly light is when it's passing kind of within the object. Speaking of within the object, the last thing I wanted to cover in this video was subsurface. Subsurface allows you to define what happens when light penetrates your object. This is particularly useful for things like skin or rubbery plastics or something like a gum sole on a shoe. Mixing and matching all these variables can give you an infinite range of materials and I encourage you to play around and experiment. This is really just barely scratching the surface of what's possible in Blender. So I hope you found this fun and I can't wait to see what you make. Like and consider subscribing and leave some comments with your own tips down below. But before we part ways, I did also want to quick fire some extra tips at you. Uh, the first of which is if a material isn't being used in your scene, maybe you set one up that's really nice, but it's not currently on an object. When you reopen that file, it will be gone. So any materials that you want to save, even if you're not using them, they can be protected by using this little shield icon here. Sheen is another variable we did not cover, but it can be used to add a little bit of a slight softness to materials, almost like they have a microscopic kind of fuzz to them. So this makes it great for fabrics and you can try using values greater than one. Those would be um, anything you'll pass one, you just have to type it in. Now, the next thing to be wary of is the alpha. Don't mix that up with transmission. Alpha can be used kind of like opacity in something like an image editing software. And this would be often used with a black and white map for something like a leaf on a tree, or you could even use it to sort of turn objects off and on in visibility. Next slider here that we did not cover is the index of refraction. That's great for working with more realistic transmission settings. So certain plastics, glasses, waters, things like that, they all have a unique index of refraction value. And you can find those values in lists online if you're interested in being super accurate. And the last slider I did want to cover briefly is clear coat. This is sort of like a second roughness value. Try adding a metal material to your object with a little bit of roughness and then add clear coat on top of that. That's a really easy way to get sort of like a car paint material where you've got an underlying soft reflection, but then the clear coat is adding a nice sharp reflection. So that's all I wanted to share. Hopefully you all enjoyed. Again, feel free to like and subscribe. Leave your own tips below. Share with me on Instagram or Twitter or wherever you like to share things, what you come up with. And uh, I hope you're enjoying learning Blender. Stick with it. It's a really fun software once you get the hang of it all. Uh, so I will see you around. Thanks for being here. Have a great day.